on the subject of homosexuality, which is another really weird segue, I have to talk about this segment. So I saw this a couple of months ago. Uh, this was actually posted eight months ago, um, but I never reacted to it. But it's so wild to me because this guy, um, PBD, uh, I'm trying to remember what that stands for. Um, Peter Bradley <laughs> Davidson. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. So he talks to these two guys from the iced coffee. Oh, oh Patrick Bet David. It's right here. Okay. So he talks to these two guys um, and he asks them if they're gay. And then he goes on to explain why gay people are gay because obviously he thinks it's a, it's a choice. But the way that he says it is so funny because he's, he's so confident that he's, he's crushing it right now. He's cooking, he's blowing their minds but he says the dumbest shit I've ever heard anyone say, so let's watch. So if you have to choose which of the two things to put in school, and you have to have one of them, which one will it be? You ready for this technical question? Yeah. Would you rather have your kids have to learn about God and pray every morning and to pledge allegiance to the flag, but they don't get LGBTQ learning, you know, all the different sexes and all that stuff? Or would you take God out of school and add, they have to learn about what it is to be gay, lesbian, bisexual? Yeah, that one. That one makes more sense to me. Yeah. Because being gay and lesbian and bisexual, like, that's a thing that exists, whereas there is no evidence for God. So we should be teaching kids about things that are real and not made up fairy tales. Um that's just so I mean it's it's an easy question. Uh next. What's the next question? Because yeah. Queer, trans, and they have to know at an early age because it's part of us being free and not being discriminatory. Which of those two would you want your kids to learn about and you have to give up the other one? I feel like there has to be a balance because you don't want to be there has to be a balance. What kind of a weird ass centrist position is this? Where it's like, listen, we need to teach kids about why being gay is okay and queer history, but they also need to learn about the Bible and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. This is the most weird centrist position I think I've ever seen. I don't know much about these guys' um, political ideology, but this is like the final boss of enlightened centrism. And it's so weird to me. You could just say what you really feel. You could just admit that you think that teaching kids the Bible is not just wrong, uh, but it's also unconstitutional, so we can't do it oppressive or let's say your 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 kid is gay you don't want yeah. them to feel like they can't be accepted and they can't be themselves but at the same time there's got to be some sort of you got to pick one of them you got to pick one uh, of them come on Greg. i don't know man okay. i i don't so I, that's this is so weird why do you have to pick one of them that's so bizarre well that's a problem yeah and, and the reason why that's a problem is the following thing <laughs> um are you gay me? Yeah. No. <laughs> what do I? Not what do I need to do no. to convert? Yeah, I'm listening. What do but... I need to do to convert into being gay? I don't think you, you. This is getting weird. You can. You don't think I could convert you to being gay? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. So is, me... <laughs> is that an offer? This is so weird. Like if I were if I were there, I would feel so uncomfortable right now. Um, if this dude asked, "What could I do to convince you to be gay?" I would take that as a threat, honestly. Uh, as a gay dude, I would take that as a threat. I'd be like. We need to get the fuck out of here. This is getting really weird fast. Abandon, <laughs> evacuate, <laughs> cut it off. This is weird. Let me ask you this. Uh, who converted you into getting a real estate license? I did. Who influenced you though? How did you learn about real estate? I saw a TV commercial for a million dollar listing. Perfect. That kind of so, got in my mind. Uh, so, so you see where he's going with this, right? Hmm, you got into real estate. Did you start having these feelings that you didn't know how to talk about when you were five, where you saw a home and you're like, what if I up the market value on that, did a little bit of flipping, you know, replace the roof, maybe I can get an additional 20 grand for it. Did you have those feelings when you were young? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody turned you into a real estate agent, they groomed you into being a real estate agent, and then when you're 13 years old, you go on the internet when everybody's sleeping, and you're looking up listings on Zillow. Come on. The way for it. He's going to drop the hammer. And you yeah. were influenced to be a real yeah. <laughs> level level three potato. I know I wanted to be a landlord when I was eight. Yeah, you know, you know it's just it's natural. You know, some people, they know they want to be um, real estate agents, landlords, 
um, cops, you know, these there's things you got to look for. You weren't born with wanting to be a realtor. Correct. Bingo. Yeah. Did got you get him. it? Let me explain to you what I mean by this. Sure, Do it. Please. Thank you. So stats came out that shows which generation is the gayest generation of all. That's part of the LGBTQ community. Do you think you care more about what I think at this age or when you were 14 years old? Definitely 14. No problem. Me too, right? So do you think it's easier to convert you in a way of thinking at 14 or 33? 14. Of course, right? right? Okay. I became a Christian because somebody talked to me about it. I got into insurance because somebody influenced me to get into insurance. Makes okay? sense. Yeah. I got into bodybuilding because I was influenced by Arnold Schwartz. I went to Santa Monica mm -hmm. Community College because I was influenced because that's where Arnold went. Influence. He decided to get a podcast because he watched the Humanist Report, I'm sure. Okay, interesting. I see where he's going with this. Somebody influenced you, right? Mm -hmm. Four generations, five generations. Traditionalist, you got the boomers, millennials, Gen X, right. and you got... Gen Z, you ready? Traditionalist, 0.8% of our gay. 0.8% of traditionalists are gay. Boomers, 2.6%. Then you go to 5%, then you go to 10%. You know what percentage of Gen Z identifies as LGBTQ? 21%. 21. Oh my God. 20. That means that, that they're recruiting. That's why. That's why the numbers are subsequently growing with each generation, you know? It's not that people are more comfortable coming out now. It's because they're recruiting. 21%. Those are rookie numbers, by the way. We can recruit much more. Um, I think that really what we should do is do what Jehovah's Witnesses do. Go door to door. Just be like, excuse me, sir. Have you heard about homosexuality? <laughs> So you know, you know what he's doing. He's go he's going to the choice argument, um, and I just I love the confidence here because he's like, if you could be recruited into real estate, you could be recruited into homosexuality. Boom! I just rocked your world and blew your fucking minds. Twenty one percent. So, who do you think cares less about what you and I think, traditionalists or Gen Zs? Traditionalists. You think if you and I are seventy years old and we're gay, do you really think you and I care about what other people think? What do you think? No. You're coming out. You ever seen a grandma or grandfather drop F-bombs and it's like, get your butt out of my, because that, you know, listen, I'm yeah. 10 years away from living and dying. Like, I don't give a shit what you think about me. But if 20... Um, I don't know what old people he's talking to, but the old people that I talk to freak the fuck out if you swear around them. So he must be talking to different old people because they clutch their pearls at every fucking thing you do. 1% of Gen Z is gay. They're being influenced just like you were influenced to be a realtor, just like I was influenced uh. to go into SMC. Influence. That's a problem. So the fact that you, a very smart guy, a super successful guy at your age, cannot tell the two apart, that means you're, you're not really putting a lot of thought into what's going to influence who. Because God, faith, that's going to influence you to do what? Completely different thing. Don't you think that some of that, though, is a bit of that overall people are on somewhere on a spectrum? And if so, OK, I think I get it. I think I understand it. You don't just become a real estate agent or a bartender. Somebody approaches you and they say, hey, have you heard about this this career opportunity to become a real estate agent or a bartender? And, you know, you kind of decided to go into that career because it interested you. Somebody made it seem appealing. And the same exact thing is true for homosexuality. And look, you all might be thinking that he's off his rocker. He's 100% correct. So actually, when I was five, we had somebody come to our door and they gave me a pamphlet about homosexuality. And I was like, what is this homosexuality? I've never heard of this before. Um, and I looked it up. You know, um, I started reading about homosexuality. And I applied for a homosexual license, and by the time I was eight, I got one. And now I'm a full-blown homosexual, married to a man and everything. And had that person not given me the pamphlet, um, I probably would have a wife right now, uh, you know, and, and multiple kids. So in the same way that you can be recruited into the army or a cult, you can be recruited into homosexuality. This argument that he's making has never been made before, by the way. Um, and it's so persuasive. I've never heard anyone make this argument. So it's very, very persuasive. Um, there's just one problem, though. 
So if it's true that you can be recruited into homosexuality, who recruited him into heterosexuality? Because if it's true for gay people, it's also true for straight people. So that assumes that we're all just kind of born as a blank slate. And then once we're old enough, we're given the options. Hey, there's homosexuality and heterosexuality. Which path do you want to go down, young Padawan? And then you pick. But see, he doesn't bring that up. Because for straight people, there's no recruitment there. It's just natural. That's the way that he was born. He's just naturally inclined to be attracted to women and form emotional relationships with women. But I guess that can all go away if somebody sells you on homosexuality. Now, it's crazy because all the folks that say that homosexuality is a choice, um, you literally can test this out. I've said this before multiple times. You can test it. Um, you know, if you have a hypothesis, you put it to work. Go suck a dick. Go and be with men. Uh, have... The most influential gay person try to sell you on homosexuality um, and see if that works. I mean, are you afraid that they're going to convince you to be gay? If so, that kind of says what, you know, we're all thinking that you might be gay yourself. But I mean, if you're confident in your sexuality, then they can't convince you. So you might as well listen, right? But I mean, if they can convince you, then of course he can be convinced as well. So what I'm getting at here is that people who think that being gay is a choice, they say this because they made a choice. It's kind of a tell on themselves, right? Now, I'm not saying that uh, Peter is Pat, – Patrick is gay. Patrick? Patrick is gay. I'm not saying he's gay. Um, but I'm saying he's not like 100% straight. He's probably bi-curious. That would be my guess. And like he's found men attractive, but he's like, nope, going to push that shit down and just be with women. And so he probably thought, I made that choice. Therefore, other people make that choice. And it's just a matter of if you're influenced or not. And I say this because, like, there's there's a rapper. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, Boosie. We call him Bussy these days. Boozy Badass. Um, he attacked Lil Nas X and said something to the effect of, like, he's out here flaunting his sexuality and kids are trying to be straight. And it's like, excuse me, kids are trying to be straight? Listen. You don't have to try to be straight if you're straight. You just are straight. You like what you like. You don't like what you don't like. Um, so the fact that he said that gave us a lot of insight into his own thinking. The same is true for Chaya Rychik, right? Where she was like, man, LGBTQ plus people, you know, they're trying to prey on kids. It's so alluring to kids. That's why they're all doing it. I mean, if you're if you're straight, you're not going to find it alluring at all. Um, I don't find heterosexuality alluring in the slightest bit. Um, so... It's. I don't think that people who make this argument understand how gay they sound. <laughs> it's like it's a choice. We all make a choice. I made a choice. Um, but let's let's hear the counter to that from these uh, these two guys. If you're let's say a two out of ten or a three out of ten, that maybe you're more open about that. Whereas in other generations you weren't. And, and the Kinsey scale goes from uh, one to six, I believe, not ten. So just FYI, because I think that's what he's trying to refer to. Perhaps it's somewhere in the middle. No. I think LGBTQ is a religion. And oh. you choose which religion you want to be in front of your kids. Okay. Uh, so is being straight a religion then? Is there a God at the center of this religion? I feel like he doesn't understand how stupid this argument is. Because, like, there are characteristics of religions. And a sexual orientation meets none of those. And what's funny is that people who are gay and trans and LGBTQ plus in general... They're also religious. It's completely irrelevant. Um, but this is just a thing that conservatives say where it's like, oh, woke is a religion. Oh, you know, um, this is a religion. That's a religion. It's just what they like. They're just saying shit. Um, but it doesn't have any connection to reality. You choose if a person is gay, you're eventually going to be gay. You're, you're going to be gay. You're not yeah. going to be if, if you're going to do what you're going to do. Like, for example, I, I, I thought about I interviewed a guy who was a um, uh, negotiator, FBI agent who would sit down with people that killed. Um, this uh, is very uh, similar were, to gayness, you know, by the way. Murderers that killed their own family members. And I said, so what gets somebody to get to the point of wanting to do something like this? And he explained how there's a difference between what you're born with, what you're influenced with, and then to take the action, right? There yeah. are some people that are I, I think that learning about uh, sexual orientation 
through somebody who analyzes serial killers. That does make the most sense to me personally. So I'm glad that he's going with this route. Born who are dark human beings, period, that they enjoy it. They're mm -hmm. born that way. You know, if you look at the Iceman, I don't know if you've ever seen interviews of the Iceman. Have yes. you ever watched interviews of Iceman? Yeah. That guy is cold, and he enjoyed what he did. He what percentage the ice of man. the world is like that? What would you say? <laughs> I don't say? know who that is. 0.1%? Okay. So are we going to say, no, you know, he was influenced to be that way. There had to be a darker person in his life to get him to be that dark. No, he's born that way. Okay. Are some people born gay maybe? Maybe. Okay. But if we take a 1,000 gay people, what percentage of them are gay because they were born gay? What percentage of them are gay because they were influenced to be gay? Or life influenced them to be gay? All of them. <laughs> same, again, uh, the same is true for straight people. Well, if we take a 1,000 straight people, how many of them were born straight? How many of them were influenced to be straight? Because, I mean, if we're really talking about recruiting here, you see heterosexuality everywhere. It's in every TV show. There's straight couples. It's in music. You have girls singing about boys, boys singing about girls. It is everywhere. The biggest pop star, Taylor Swift, she's straight. She sings about men. Why doesn't anything he's saying about gay people apply to straight people as well, right? And how does... How does bisexual people even fit into this stupid worldview? Because he can't account for them who genuinely are attracted to both genders. So that right there kind of stumps him. But like he's very obtuse in his thinking because he can't imagine people just being born gay. There has to be some like spark that lights the homosexuality. They can't just be the way they are like straight people are. Um, and again, it's very telling to me. That's a real question we have to talk about. I understand it's a very I, yeah, uncomfortable I thing. I think it would be just attraction. Who are, like, like I am attracted to certain people and a certain type. I'm not attracted to another type. No problem. So dude. I feel like that would be the same thing with gender. I'm, I'm it's like if you're attracted to men or women, that uh, would be. Graham. Yeah. Do that's too much logic, okay? It's a basic point, but that's too much logic. You have to slow down for him. Do you think you need to learn how to give a blowjob to another boy at 11 Whoa, years old. Whoa, you're no. talking about learning to be gay. I'm sorry, are you recruiting them from the start of this interview? Like, it seems like it's, <laughs> it seems like you're trying to recruit them. Like, what if these two guys end up being gay after this? Let me go back. That was Jesus Christ. So I feel like that would be the same thing with gender. I'm, I'm it's like if you're attracted to men or women, that uh, would be. Graham, yeah. do you think you need to learn how to give a blowjob to another boy at 11 years old? No. That book is in school. Who who thinks that? What school? What book is this? I'm guessing gender queer or something like that. The book for like young adults. Schools recommended teaching by many teachers in America. Do you think that's a problem? That's not recommended by teachers. It's just available for for some fucking students to check out from the library if they want it. That's that's his evidence that gay people are recruiting kids because a book exists. Well, there's also books for all kinds of shit that doesn't prove anything. You're just looking for reasons to prove that queer people are like a religious cult recruiting people when that's that's so absurd. Sure. Do you think it's a better usage of my time to learn how money works? Yes. Or how to please another boy at 11 years old? Right. So then you have to decide your values and principles between the two. I think these values being taught to kids... Are kids typically more liberal or conservative? Liberal. Liberal. I'm, I'm, are you kidding? Kids don't have political ideologies. It's whatever the fuck their parents think. What conversation are they even having right now? Hey, do you think that kids should be taught uh, fellatio or how to balance you know, their checkbooks? What kind of a conversation even is this? The fact that your demented mind is asking this question says so much about what the fuck you're thinking. You are weird and sus as hell. I mean, I'm all liberal. Like, let's try drugs. Let's try this. Let's break the law. Let's break this. Hey, let's sneak into the swimming pool and have the cops chase us. Hey, let's test this out. We're liberal, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> liberals all think that way. You know, when I was a young whippersnapper, I was like, wouldn't it be so cool if we broke the law, guys? <laughs> like, what the fuck? This, okay, I don't know how old this guy is. This motherfucker is a boomer. This is boomer mentality if I've ever seen it. It's the way liberals think. Oh my god, it would be so fucking cool if we did drugs, everyone. <laughs> Brother, you are so out of touch. Holy shit. We don't need to teach more liberal policies to kids. They're going to do shit. We're going to do stuff. We need to balance it out with what? With this.
Okay? So now watch this. Do you think rich, greedy people who have a lot of money, do you Should think die? they need to be taught more conservative stuff or more this stuff? Oh. Liberal stuff. What do you think? Do you see how yeah, this is working true. out? So to it's me, it's the other way around. I think we've mixed it up. So be under. This guy's 28 years old. He's gay. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. And they're just like nodding along, daydreaming. Like this dude is completely checked out. He's like thinking about fucking what he's going to eat for dinner. This dude is closer. So he feels a little bit more pressure to try to engage with it. But he's thinking like, what the fuck? This guy is dumb as shit. Holy shit. There's nothing going on up here. And he thinks he's killing it. He thinks he's cooking. But the dude is saying the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard anyone say. Hey, no problem. I got plenty of gay employees. I have plenty of lesbian leaders in my company. Plenty of them. And what's their names? Name one. I'm sure they're very happy there. Hey, who re my hey Tina, who recruited you into lesbianism? Who, who was it? Who made you a lesbian? Oh, you know, I was just born this way. Hmm. That's what all cultists say. Like, fuck off. You're so full of shit. And how big is this company? Valuetainment? I mean, it's a lot of subscribers, but like, how big is this fucking company that you have so many gay people working for you? I don't believe it. My relationship is with them. You chose to do that as an adult. Salute. A couple of them were here yesterday. Just watch how they hug me when they see me. Mm -hmm. We love each other. We have an incredible relationship. Then later on, we need to learn and say, hey, man, can you be a little bit kind to these people? Dude, relax. They just see things in a different way than you do. All good. I think we need to give conservative values to kids when we're liberals. And I think we need to inject a little bit of this when we're older, successful, to be a little bit more understanding. I think the education is out of whack. Hmm. You know, maybe the LGBTQ stuff can be taught to people that are older to be a little bit more gentle to them. But it's, so you're asking a question. I'm going to go back to it. God is one of them. What's being so... His solution, if I'm if I'm understanding him correctly, is that in order for society to be more balanced, you know, you need a little bit of both, a yin and a yang. You need to teach the libs conservatism and teach conservatives a little bit of liberalism when they're older. What? <laughs> I mean... This is genuinely an unserious conversation. And the fact that he's still going and he thinks he's crushing it right now is wild to me because this is the most banal shit I've ever heard. You're not saying anything. You're not proposing anything serious. The way we turn our heroes into, he you know, who the hero making machine is in America is a problem. Today we recognize- What is the hero making machine? Who exactly is this? And how does this machine turn out heroes exactly? What's going on here? What does that even, I genuinely don't even know what the fuck that means. It's complainers. Today we recognize who posts more naked pictures on social media, gets the most likes. Today we recognize oh, that. You're going to say that, motherfucker, well, what is, this has 1.6 million views. You have 5 million subscribers. You're going to complain about like, oh, you have to, you have to uh, be a degenerate or post naked pictures to, to get traction. Bro, this video has a ton of views. Aren't you like a massive fucking podcast host? Like, why are you complaining? Shut up. At more than somebody like you is responsible, makes his own money, works his tail off. You're, you seem very kind. You seem humble. You seem likable. Yet you're doing your research. Yet you're willing to talk to people. So we've confused kids on who the hero today is. Oh, my God, poor person. Look at this person. They came out of the closet at 14 years old. Let's do 28 articles on them. But that 14-year-old... Where were my articles when I came out, okay? I didn't get any articles about my bravery. <laughs> Nobody commended me for shit, okay? So, I don't know. He's living in a fucking made-up world. But, like, I'm just noticing this guy. This dude is so fucking checked out right now. He's like, what the fuck is this guy even saying? kid who made $28,000 independently at yeah, whatever, it's not a big deal. But let's highlight this person. What are you doing? Which one do we need more? Name an example. You're just like making shit up at the top of your fucking head. For society, more people coming out of closet or more 14 year olds that are making $28,000 on their own. We're what 14 year old is making $28,000? I mean, listen, I could think of certain arguments where it's like, oh, this little girl, she made a lemonade stand because her mom had cancer. Like, I see those stories that are celebrated, but those stories aren't necessarily like good. It's perseverance porn where it's like, wait, why does this little girl have to raise money for her mom's cancer treatment when that should just be fucking free? 
So I, I like I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's just making shit up to be mad about. This is the thing with conservatives. They're always shadow boxing, right? Their grievances are illegitimate and not real. So they have to like pretend that things are happening to be mad about because they don't have actual examples of it really happening. They just make shit up. Wrong people into heroes. And it's confusing the F out of kids. So to me, those are things that we've been doing that's kind of messed up America a bit. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here. I don't. I would genuinely rather kill myself than watch the entire podcast. But yeah, that was uh, PBD um, with the title, Are You Gay? PBD asks Graham and Steven or Stefan Point Blake. Damn, that was a wild ride. But this dude has shit for brains, very clearly idiotic, very full of himself, um, and doesn't understand how sexuality works, doesn't really understand how the world works, which is weird because I'm pretty sure he's way older than me, so he should have more wisdom in theory, but you don't necessarily get wiser with age. You get wiser when you educate yourself and you learn about the world and learn how things actually work. But yeah, that was entertaining at least. I will give him credit for being an entertaining person. Uh, Because he's wrong about everything. Like, everything he said there was complete horseshit and very weird and very creepy in some instances. Uh, But, you know, it was entertaining, so I'll give him that. Mom. I'm gay. Gay. Gays. Gays. Mom. I'm transgender. Gender. 